So super excited to be back uh, to, uh, to Beijing. So today I'm going to share about data orchestration for AI, big data, and cloud. So those are three uh, very hot topics, AI, big data, cloud, right? So if you look into that, what's the fundamental commonality in these three different trends? So there are three things. One is that all this is about the data. That's number one. Secondly, it's that you have the algorithm and logic you build on top of the data and try to produce the value from data. That's second. And the third thing is that on top of that, you build a common infrastructure so that you can efficiently enable more people to leverage this AI and data and cloud. So that's the commonality. So today, in this presentation, or focus on the data side. It's not just the data itself. I mean, of course, the data itself has the most value. It's about, for the data itself, how can we build the best data platform and infrastructure to enable all the big data and AI in the cloud environment? So that's what we'll talk about. To understand that, first of all, let's see what is the history. What's the journey to today? about the data. So we are in this, we're in this data revolution. It's critical. And uh, it started probably, you can, you can say, it started probably 20 years ago uh, towards the end of the uh, Internet 1.0. And uh, at the time, uh, industry realized the, vol the, the value and the power of the data. So all these organizations, all these companies, they started to collect and generate and store much more data than before. That's the first step. They store this, they collect the data and generate data. And on top of that, so what do they do? So they want more people, more teams in their companies, in their organizations, start to self-service, leverage the data they have collected to improve their business, to improve their whatever thing they are doing. So they improve the people's life in the end of the day. And that's the second thing. And on top of that, that's a, the, 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 the society, that's a world trend. And what's the IT trend then? If you look back for the past 40, 50 years for the IT trend, in the end of the day, you will find a cycle. You will find a uh, pattern there, which is in both compute side, which is the application side, and the storage side, the technologies, they started to evolve, revolutionize. And every three to eight years, you will find that there will be new wave, new generation of the applications come up, as well as new generation of storage systems like innovation come up to disrupt the previous generation. As you can see, five, 10 years ago, industry was very hot for analytics and interactive analytics, real-time analytics. Now it's machine learning, deep learning, AI. And five years from today, there'll be another side of things. And we have all experienced that of the history. It's just a cycle again and again. And in this cycle, what's important from the data perspective, because of this three to eight years innovation cycle, revolution cycle, you will see the data become siloed. So what does that mean? And it means all the organizations today, they have the data all over the place in different deployments of the same and more likely to be different type of store systems. And you, you encountered over the past 15 years from HDFS on-premise to object store on-premise to cloud storage like in the cloud, et cetera. So this journey and this direction based on the industry trend of the past 50 years, is inevitable, so these data silos. So then, this creates a huge amount of challenge for these organizations in the end of the day to effectively leverage their data in their environment. So as a data scientist, as a modeler, as a researcher, you want to create an AI algorithm, you want to create a machine learning algorithm, what do you do? You have, to you have to get the data first, and itself is very inefficient. Typically, it takes from weeks to months. That's a challenge. So then, we, I mean, we're here today, 
and we are not the first time talking about this challenge, and this challenge has been seen by many innovators in the industry. So what, does, what are the solutions industry have been tried uh, to solve this challenge? The number, one, the number one approach over the past 15 years is about the single data lake approach. People are trying to convince the industry saying, oh, I have a great system, and you should put all your data in this one single storage system. That's your single data lake. Guess what? They are repeating the cycle again and again. That's not really fundamentally solving the issue. And in the end of the day, all the organizations, leading organizations, they ended up with many data, data, data lakes, uh, either HDFS and S3 or any cloud storage, OpStore store, et cetera. That's the first approach it failed. And the second approach is a very, it's not a really approach per se, it's more of a workaround. People say, hey, this is a big challenge. I don't have a solution, what do I do? So I just put a very limited amount of data in a small side of a, you know, like uh, in a small environment, then try to, uh, try to uh, process it. And you can see from modeler training, uh, like when you do training, et cetera, for researchers, that is a real challenge. They do their processing every single day using the laptop, using their single PC machine server, and then try to scale it up. And that would take a long time. And typically, it's from month to year. That's the second approach. So these two approaches, we don't believe it works, and industry have proved that. So the third pro approach, which is what we are proposing, is that you abstract and orchestrate the data. That's the solution that we are proposing. And essentially, this will create a new layer for the, for the whole IT industry. And hopefully, this will solve the issue and will prove how, that, how it does so. So we talk about the trend of the industry, the society. And let's, see, let's take a single organization view, how their data journey over the past 10 years has been through. And then we use the same example with the data orchestration, data orchestration system to showcase how it work differently. So at the beginning, you have a hive with HDFS to do SQL query, very slow. And, and gradually, you find a faster system called Spark. You do another way. You build another system and another HDFS. And now you want to do machine learning. You do. What do you do? You do uh, tons of flow with NFS. You have to migrate the data, have, de have duplication of the data all over these different places. And then now, what's even fun, you have the cloud. And then you migrate some of your data into the cloud. You have the data security issue for sure. At the same time, you have Spark there. You, you say, oh, I'm a cloud company. And the next one, you want to run, oh, there's a faster query engine called Presto. I want to leverage that. And you want to go across the van because now object store is popular. And the other thing is uh, you want to use another cloud. You have multi-cloud strategy. And you want to query HDFS data, which is on your, uh, in your on-premise environment. That is the status quo. This is how the leading companies over the past 10 to 15 years, how their journey went through. That's that's side this goal. So then let's see, with this data orchestration system, what's the difference? So you build a Hive, and Hive on top of this data orchestration system only interact with that. And data orchestration system will interact with all the storage systems. And then you have a Spark. You do not need to build another HDFS anymore. You save lots of cycle uh, from the IT, your IT department. And your business is much more agile, uh, much more effective, efficient. And similarly, now you have TensorFlow. Never need to worry about uh, uh, how to access the data again. Uh, talk to this data orchestration system, and which will talk to both HDFS and NFS, like a local laptop, very simple. And then you have Spark, similar story. You have Presto. And moving forward, it is about any, any data-driven application, which you will see more. In five years, you will see another wave of innovation beyond whatever it is popular today. So that's, the, 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 what's, that's how the world will evolve with this new uh, layer, new system, new concept in the stack, in the IT industry. So then, this data orchestration system for the cloud, it provides three major functions, three major, major values from the technical perspective. You have the data locality. You have the data accessibility, and you have the data elasticity for the AI and big data workloads and any data workloads, any data workloads moving forward. That's the technical side. And then from the business perspective, 
from the from what's the impact from business perspective is that you have far more effective far more effective data platform so that enable your business to grow to be several times more efficient than before of leveraging the data so you can say if you're say there are two companies a and b they're competing and one company may have this type of platform improve their internal efficiency for the data people like machine learning ai people for four times and over the time, three years later, competing with uh, another organization B, you know what will happen. And that's the number one importance. And you have the data strategy, AI strategy, and you have the platform. And number, much more effective. And on top of that, you know, it's faster, it's cheaper, it's cost saving, but in the end of the day, it's, it's well it will enable much more application be based on the data. And uh, the whole company the whole organization will be more effective. And that's, a, uh, that's a, what's the value uh, for this data orchestration system in the system, in the, in the ecosystem. And then let's see from the technical perspective, where does this new layer, new system sit in the ecosystem? Essentially, it's laid bet between all the data-driven applications on top, and like Spark, Presto, Cafe, PyTorch, TensorFlow, et cetera and many more moving forward. And any storage system in your organization you may have, which at the beginning is EMC, like IBM, HPE, and now you have HDFS, and you have object store, and moving forward, you have cloud storage. And this data orchestration system in the middle essentially build a industry common APIs on top, and this enables all the data-driven applications to be able to interact with the data through the system without worrying about whatever storage system it is running, it is using. And at the bottom, for the southbound, it essentially have the drivers to interact with all the possible storage systems you can think of in this world. And this is very analogous to like uh, Kubernetes, say to container, which is a container orchestration system. So the, that orchestrated containers for the CPU, for the compute resource. And this system orchestrates the data um, for the data resource in your environment. That's, in the end, that what it is. And this is a, where technically it stands in the ecosystem. And we'll give some examples how industry leverages this. One example, like uh, China Unicom, they are in the early stage of this journey, uh, but they are a pioneer in this as well. And they have leveraging this data orchestration system to manage uh, their HDFS as well as the object store altogether to save months of time ETL for their internal team to prepare the data for the researchers, for the modelers, for the analysts. This is one example. And uh, the other example is a company called Two Sigma. It's a leading uh, hedge fund in the world. They're managing uh, $60 billion, uh, six billion US dollars to trade in the market. And essentially, they have a hybrid cloud environment, and they keep the most important data on premise. But at the same time, they leverage a data orchestration system to improve their modeler's efficiency by four times. So running their application, training application in the cloud. And uh, so previously, what has to, be, has, to, has to take a year to finish, now it only takes three months for them to get it done. This is a strong business agility. That's a, a second example. And with this, so at Aluxio, so Aluxio, it is an open source implementation of the data orchestration system. And it, the system itself, the open source project itself, started from UC Berkeley AmpLab. And it has more than 1,000 contributors worldwide, many from uh, Beijing, Shanghai, many from China. And uh, at the same time, two months ago, there's a report published. Over 96 million repositories in the GitHub, and this uh, system, this repository, is ranked as the top 100 repository there. And it's open source, and of course, you can join the community using the Slack there are many Chinese contents using the WeChat uh, channel as well. So that's an uh, open source implementation. And with this open source implementation, many companies are leveraging the system, uh, leveraging the concept, moving towards that direction. Of course, the journey will take time, 
typically uh, at least it will take three years. You have some small project at the beginning, but this journey is the direction this company has been moving into. And very proud, and in China, eight of the top 10 uh, most valuable internet companies that are all running this open source uh, project going this direction. And you can find more online information as well. So in the end, uh, I'm su again, I'm super excited to be back here to, uh, to share the data orchestration and uh, to share the philosophy, a me methodology, how we are embracing the data silo to build the data platform for the future using a dramatic, uh, using a very different approach from, a existing, uh, from the existing, uh, from the status quo. And in the end, uh, I'd love to uh, welcome you to join the community and after the, uh, join the community and try the system and understand the, uh, the concept and share the, the knowledge as well. Thank you very much. Super excited to be back in Beijing. <laughs>